Hi guys and welcome back to episode 9 of our VR game tutorial series. In this one we're going to take a look at our game loop. It's going to be the main section that the player uses to play the game. Let's dive right in. So just uh, as a quick recap, in our last episode we had a look at creating a start UI. Not like this one, we did a very simple one. I just had some time in the week just to work and uh, make it look a bit nicer. Um, but it works exactly the same, so you pick up your gun, shoot your target, uh, which then causes this countdown. I'm going to show you in a second. And then you go would go into the game. Um, but at the moment, the game would stay in this state uh, indefinitely, and you can just keep shooting stuff. And our game's all going to be controlled using a timer, because you've, you've only got so long to shoot these targets and get a score. So in this one, we're going to have a look at creating that timer and then having an end state. So when it hits zero, uh, it says game over and then do a restart and go again. So let's take a look at adding that functionality now. So as a quick recap, what's happening here is that we have a, this game start UI, which is a, an empty object in the scene, which contains a canvas, which is all, all everything you see here, just the text. And one of our targets with um, the game start target script on it. And this script is just inheriting from the interface we set up um, a few episodes ago now. Works exactly the same as a target. Um, so it has the uh, target shot and the play animation and the play audio, which it inherits from the interface. So we can use that to trigger our game. So this is the game start target. And as you can see, we're using our interface, our VI target. Uh, and as soon as our target is shot, uh, we disable the collider so we can't keep hitting it. We then invoke a method called on target shot, and then we play our audio and we play our animation. And then that on target shot event is just here. And all we're doing is we're telling our game start UI controller that we have hit the target. We click on there. Take you, you'll show you where that script is. It sits on game start and here's our UI controller in Visual Studio. And all it's doing is very simple. Uh, it's changing the text on the UI panel to get ready. And it runs a coroutine, which just does the timer effect counting down from three to one zero go. And then as soon as it's reached go, calls a method called start game, which uh, last week we saw that we could access our game manager and look at the game start method, which is here. So this is our game manager. And then once we enter this game start method in our game manager, we're starting the game. And we can then recreate the hit graphics on the objects, on the targets. So as soon as we've started the game, this start game is uh, an event that some we can use to control other things in our game that want to listen to that particular event. So if there's anything in the scene, we don't want to connect directly to the game manager. We've got an event there called start game, which we can use to control the flow a little bit. But we're going to create a timer in this one, which is going to be the loop of our game. So the player shoots the target and then the timer starts and counts down. And as soon as the timer reaches the end, it's game over. So the way we're going to show to the player the time, we're actually going to use a canvas which is just going to show you the player what time they've got remaining and, and how we integrate that canvas into the scene is um, I'm still trying to work out, but at the moment I'm thinking like there'll be like a chalkboard kind of old fashioned style on the wall here that will contain all the information the player needs. Um, but I'm not sure whether that's going to be how well that's going to work. And that all comes down to testing for today. What we'll do is we'll just get that canvas up and running with the timer on uh, and then we can worry about how we integrate it into the environment in another episode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate the canvas we've already got set up here. Just highlight it in the hierarchy and control D and I'm just going to move it forward a little bit. Uh, and I, we, I know roughly that I want to put this chalkboard object over here in, in the corner and it might be like kind of that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the logo. I'm going to go and keep the text for a moment and we can just call this time remaining and we'll move it up to the top. And I think overall we'll make this canvas a bit smaller, maybe like a meter by one and a half meters. And then we're just gonna have to resize our text. Go ahead and resize this a little bit. Put it in, 
something like that. That looks pretty cool. Like so. I'll give that an anchor point at the top. So then we need to show the time and we can either do that using um, an image and have it like tick down a bit like a clock, which might be quite cool. Maybe you can have some kind of clock face graphic um, as opposed to text. So for a minute, I'm just going to go ahead and put an image in here and fit it a little bit better to our canvas and make sure it's square. So if we navigate to uh, my te the textures folder and I found I've just got an image of a clock. It'll need to be a sprite. So I'm going to select texture type from the inspector and change it to sprite. And back on the image, we can drag in the clock. So it looks something like that. I'm going to tick preserve aspect so it's all squared up. Make it a little bit bigger. So the idea is this clock will like go away as the time goes and to do that we're going to use fill and then we can control this fill amount just here and we want it to start from the top and then as we drag down time is going to be going away like that. That'll do for a minute we might change that graphic later on um, for something a little bit better but that, this is the oldest clock type I can find that might suit the time period a little bit. Um, so we'll leave that in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write a script that's going to um, reduce this image over a certain amount of time. So let's dive in and take a look at creating that script. So before we go ahead and write that script, let's just do a little bit of tidying up here. In a hierarchy, let's go ahead and create an empty timer object. I'm going to call this timer controller and put it at zero, zero, zero. And just drag it up under the UI and and put it under the game start. So it's got a little bit of a flow to it. So it'd be like game start, timer control. And then under the timer controller, we're going to take the canvas we just made, this one here with the time remaining on it, and I'm going to give it a better name rather than canvas one. Let's call it timer canvas. And we're going to drop that into our timer controller. Just keep it all together. We've got a game start, which is that one at the back. And then we've got our um, timer canvas. So then if we navigate to our scripts folder and let's create a new folder, call this one game loop. This is all the scripts that are associated with stuff that's happening during the main part of the game. And we'll create a C sharp script and we'll call this one timer controller. We'll go ahead and wait for that to compile and then we'll drag it onto our timer controller game object. So it's sitting just on there and then we'll double click and open up in Visual Studio. So this is actually going to be a very simple script. We're just going to get hold of that image component we just made, the clock, and we're just going to reduce a value um, and assign it to our image fill amount. And um, so it gives the effect as though it's counting down. So there's a couple of variables we're going to need for this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the start function. We won't need that. We also won't need the two using statements at the top, the system collections and system collections generic, they can go. So we want two variables. We need to access them in the inspector, but we don't want any other classes to access this value, I don't think. So let's create a serialized field, and this one is going to be our image. So let's type image, and you'll notice we don't get what we need come up there. That's because we need a namespace, a UI namespace. So we're going to put using unity engine.ui, and now we're going to be able to access that image component. There we go. And this is going to be our timer graphic. And then we want another serialized field, which is a value we can enter for our game time. Just make a float and call it game time. And then we want another variable, and this will be the last one. This is going to be private. We don't need the private keyword, it just knows. And we're going to call this max game time. It's just going to help us with our calculations in a second. So in awake, we need to assign the value for max game time and store it because we need to remember it for later on. So we're going to type awake here and we're going to say max game time it's going to be equal to our game time, which is the value we're going to enter. And we can tidy this up if you hover the mouse over max game time and press control and full stop. It says use expression body for methods just here I'm going to head and hit enter. That's going to neaten that up for us. And we're going to use our update loop to control our timer. So we're going to say that game time is going to be minus equal to time 
dot delta time. So what's going to happen here is that our game time, let's say we say like 20 seconds. So for every second that goes by in our game, it's going to minus it from our game time, which is what we want. Uh, and then we need another local variable here. I'm going to type var. I'm going to say update timer graphic. A bit of a long variable name, but this, it, just so it's clearer to you guys what this is doing. And this is going to be equal to our game time divided by our max game time. Uh, and this is going to put that a value that we need for our image fill amount in between the zero and one. So if our game time is at 10 seconds and our max game time is 20 seconds, then 10 divided by 20 is going to be 0 0.5, which we can then assign to our image fill amount. So now we have to assign this value back to our image. So we're going to say timer graphic. We want to access the fill amount and that is going to be equal to our update timer graphic value. And we go ahead and finish it off with a semicolon. Control S to save and let's just quickly jump back into Unity and wire it all up. So when that's compiled, you'll see here on the timer controller, we've got a, a space for our image graphic and the game time. So let's go ahead and assign the image graphic. Let's find it here. Here's our clock image. It's called image. Drag that in there. We could should rename that really. Let's call this timer image. And let's say for our game time, just while we're testing, let's say it's 10 seconds. So let's put 10 in there. And then we can go ahead and hit play and see if our timer is counting down. There we go. Perfect. As you can see, our timer is counting down. You can see our game time is going down here and uh, that's reflected in our hit graphic. So boom, this will be the point where our game would be over. So let's look next at how we can hook up our timer to come on as soon as our target here for starting the game has been shot. We want our timer to come on and start counting down. Let's have a look at how we can implement that. Okay, so let's set this next part up. So we don't want our timer time remaining to always be active. We can go ahead and, and just turn off the time at canvas and off just that like that. And then from here on in, it's just going to be um, all done through scripts. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into Visual Studio and let's take a look at our game manager. And if you remember rightly, we have an event up here called on game start called start game, which is fired as soon as our target is hit. We're going to use this to set our timer going off and also activating our timer graphic. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our timer controller and we're going to listen for this event from the game manager. So in our timer controller class, we want to allow this script to listen to the game manager for that particular start game event. So in order, in order to do that, we're going to use on enable. I'm going to start by typing game manager and dot. And then we want the event to start game. I'm going to say plus equals and the name of the method we want to call as soon as uh, the start game event is fired. And we haven't got that yet. So we can just make a new one here called activate timer off with a semicolon. You've got squiggly red line because as I said we haven't made it yet so we can click on it, control, full stop and generate that method. So it puts it here just below. We can go ahead and take out the throw, throw exception and we'll leave that method there for the time being. What we will do is we need to stop listening to that event so we can say private void on disable. We'll copy that entire line on line 15 there, paste it just below and we'll put a minus. If you remember that little shortcut for making an, an expression body, on the left click on the game manager, control, full stop, use expression body for method. And do the same for the on disable. I'm using Visual Studio here so that works and I think you can do it in other um, editors as well, so like Rider and stuff, you can do all those little shortcuts. So in our timer controller, we're going to need to turn on our timer graphics. Now we do have an access to the image but that's not um, the canvas object. So we'll create another serialized field and this is going to be a game object and it's going to be called the timer components. Save that there. And we can say timer components dot set active and we'll put true. So we'll turn on all of our timer stuff. And what will happen here is that as soon as the game runs, our timer is going to be going down even though you can't see it because it's all contained within our update loop here. So what we need to do is check 
that we can actually start the countdown and we don't want to do it straight away. So we need a bool. We need to check whether a value is true or false. So we can say bool can timer countdown. Initially it's going to be false. And we can say in our update loop if can timer countdown that is false. So we put an exclamation mark at the beginning then we will return. We're not going to do anything. Okay, so this is checking to see if that bool is true or false. If it's false, i.e. we cannot count down, then it's just going to X out of the update loop. And then what we want to do in our activate timer, so when we get the go ahead from the game manager, we can say can timer countdown is equal to true. And then this will allow this part to happen. Now, this is a very neat. What we can do here is create a method. We'll call it update time timer like so oh it's like that it's going to have made it yet and then control full stop on there and it'll generate the method down below and we can cut and paste all of this stuff so cut it out of the update loop and pop it just in that new method down below it keeps our update loop nice and clean so if we can count down and every update is doing, it's doing exactly the same things it's just it's calling this method which is running through these and then going back and all looping all the way through. So that should be good there. I think we're all hooked up. What we'll do is we'll minimize Visual Studio, go back to our timer controller. We're going to need to drag in our timer canvas. This is what we want to turn on as soon as we get the go ahead from the game manager, like so. This will come on. That's that. So now let's test that out on the game window there. Let's um, jump into VR and see if this is all working so far. Hit play. Come here, let's pick it up. Shoot to start. The countdown, then I call that method in the game manager, they fire the event. There you go, there's our time remaining, it's counting down. Oh man, I'm feeling the pressure. Oh my god, I'm rubbish. Too close to my sensors, it keeps losing the gun. There you go, that would be game over. That's great, so now we've hooked up our little introduction piece of UI, and then as soon as we shoot our start target, we get our countdown to let's get ready, and then it activates our time remaining, shows the graphic. So from there on in, once it gets to zero, we would need to activate a game over canvas along with the reset. So we just need to tweak our timer controller a little bit just to accommodate for uh, testing whether we've reached our minimum time of zero and the time is finished. Therefore it's game over. So in our update loop, let's create another method. Let's call it check timer like so. And Again, control full stop and we'll hit enter and generate the method and it'll put it right below. I'm just going to move this around a little bit so it's more of a logical sequence. So every loop of our update and we're updating the timer and it goes through all this, updating the timer graphic and then before it goes around again, it's going to check the timer just to see if we've reached zero. So in our check timer method down below, Go ahead and remove line 45, we don't need that. And all we want to do here is check to see whether the timer graphic fill amount value is less than or equal to zero. So we could do an if timer graphic dot fill amount is less than or equal to zero and do this. We'll access the game manager. So if our timer graphic is less than or less than or equal to zero, we will notify the game manager that the game timer is finished and it's game over. So let's have a look in our game manager. We don't yet have a method for game over. So let's go ahead and create one. This is going to be public. It's going to need our timer controller class to be able to access it. And let's call it void game over. We don't need to put anything in there yet, but at least it exists. So this is to do for a minute. Go ahead and save that. And back to timer controller, we can access our game manager. We need the game manager instance, which is accessing the singleton. And we want to get the game over method, which is there. It's not timer graphic dot fill center. Timer graphic dot fill amount. There we go. So make sure that's on fill amount. So every frame, our check timer is going to be checked. And if it's uh, less than zero or equal to zero, it's going to access our game manager and call the game over method. But what we'll need to do in our timer here is actually stop it counting. And we can do that using our can timer countdown. So we can say can timer countdown 
equals false. That'll stop it from running and keep checking and then keep calling the game manager over and over again. We would also need to reset our game time because um, it, it, remember it's counting down. So if we want to go again through the game on a reset or something, we will need that value to be reinitialized. So we can say game time equals max game time, which is a value that doesn't change. So that just that sets up our um, timer controller for a minute. And what we can do is we can turn it off as well, actually thinking about it. Um, so we're going to access our timer components and just set them so they're not on anymore. That's going to be false. So let's jump back over to our game manager and we could do a couple of things here. We can either we're going to have to make um, a game over canvas and we're going to need to toggle that on or off in some way. We can even do that directly in the game manager. So in our game over method here, we could you know, physically turn on a game object off or on, or we could use uh, the event system and have our canvas come on automatically when the game is over. And that might be the way to go, considering we've already started using the events. So let's do that. Let's copy lines 22, 23 here for our start game event. And we'll have on game end. Let's change that value to, and we'll call this one end game, not Avengers. And here we can say, end game like so so let's jump back into unity and we'll have a look at creating the game over canvas so let's take a look at creating that game over canvas what we'll do is we'll go ahead and du duplicate our game start canvas control d pop it just below our timer controller and we'll call this one game over don't need the game start ui controller on here so we can go ahead and remove it and let's have a look at what else we've got so We've got our target, which is fine. I can stay there for a minute. We've got a canvas with our image on it. Uh, and then we have a shoot to start. Let's duplicate the shoot to start quickly. Drag it above and we'll call this one game over. And just pop it just above. They might need to move some things around. That's okay. Jeez, let's turn off that. That's gonna get confusing. I'll just turn off my game start because they're both the same at the minute. Let's move up our logo. Make it a bit smaller actually, this one. To move up game over instead of shoot to start let's say it's called try again actually we do yeah we can utilize that script from before can we so this is so this is going to come up when the game's over and we just need to hook up the target here so game start target it's currently missing an object go ahead drag in the game manager i'll say game manager game start so that's the canvas for a minute. What we'll do is we'll select the canvas and we will turn it off and also turn off the target. Turn on our game start canvas again. Now let's go ahead and create the script we need to control our game over canvas. So navigate down to my scripts folder, right click and go create C sharp scripts. And we'll call this one game over. And go ahead and drag and drop that one on to our game over parent object and double click to open up in Visual Studio. First before we want to access the game manager and listen for the game over event that we created which is called game end just here. So we want to listen for this. So as soon as game over is fired this event is going to be triggered. So in our game over on enable we can say game man manager we don't need an instance for this because those events are static. So we can just access them directly and you can see there in the list, it's got end game. So plus equals activate game over UI. Control and full stop and hit to generate the method. And we also want to create the on disable. Stop listening for that event. And copy that whole line, control C, control V and change the plus to a minus. I'm going to make mine expression bodies by clicking on the game manager, control, full stop, and then use expression bodies. Get rid of the act not implemented exception. And here we're going to need to turn on our target and our canvas for resetting the game. So we can say that we're going to need a serialized field and we're going to need a game object and that is going to be our canvas. Let's call this game over canvas and another serialized field, also game object. You can, you could use an array here and use a for each loop to go through the list, but this will be fine for now. So target 
and then we need to activate both of those. We can say game over canvas dot set active and we'll make it true and do the same for the target. Now for a minute, I'm just going to remove the start and update loops. This is a little easier to see what's going on. So once the game manager fires the end game event, our game over class is listening for that event and is going to activate the game over canvas. So let's give that a test to make sure it's all working. But first, back in Unity, we need to hook up our game over script. With the bits it needs, it needs the canvas and it needs the target. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so pick up the gun, start the game, hit the target, we get our countdown, getting ready to pop some caps. And then you can see our, our timer canvas is going down. God's sake, packing's awful. And then I can shoot my targets and other things will be going on. And then timer reaches zero, boom, disappears. We get our game over canvas. Don't get my target back to try again. Uh, let's go through and have a look at fixing my button. Let's go and fix that target so it comes on with our game over. And the reason it didn't come on is because I messed up in the script. I put two game over canvas set active. One of these needs to be the target, so you can change it to target dot set active to true, and that'll bring on the button. Let's give this a test and let's see what we got. Hit play. Timer's counted down. I'm getting better. Ah, there we go. Okay, so um, we've got our game over canvas has come up. We've got our button back. So that when we shoot that button, time is going off again. But we've still got our game over canvas, and we need to get rid of that. So that's the next step. Let's take a look at doing that. So what we could do here is actually leverage a script we wrote um, to control our start menu, which is the game start UI controller script. And this one is all it's doing is. Um, it's got this method here called target hit so when that button is shot uh, this method gets called and then just does this little um, display so we can actually use this um, to control our game over canvas and the, the restart um, now if we were doing this properly we would probably look to extend this script make some of these um, methods virtual um, and then inherit from this script um, but we could just use it as is uh, its name isn't great because it says the game start UI controller although it still kind of works but we're just going to use the same class so on our game over script we can add in the game start UI script drag in the text that we want to change that displays our 3 2 1 which is going to be this text here bottom text just to shoot to start um, which will be the try again text try again and then when our target is shot rather than calling the game manager let's call that um, new class so we hit the plus and we're going to drag in our game over find the game start UI controller and go target hit which is just here which is then going to take over and do everything for us so let's test that and see if that's worked counting down our game goes, we can shoot our targets. Still going down. Up, the boy. Down. Put down. There we go. Game over. Try again. Get ready. Three, one, and then go. Then it turns off our canvas. Starts our timer going off, and then we can go ahead and shoot some more. What it has done is uh, that game start UI script turns off our canvas and um, which we don't want it to do so we might need to tweak a few things let's have a look at doing that now okay so let's take a look at tweaking that script and we're gonna click on the game over and we're gonna have a look at our game start UI controller script so I'm gonna refactor this one a little bit take into account the new functionality that we need because at the moment as soon as um, we shoot the target it's going to turn off our game over script. We don't need it to turn off the game over script. We only need it to turn off the components that it contains. So we're going to make an array, uh, which we can drag these two game objects in. And then um, once we shoot our target, we're going to move through that array and turn it off, leaving the parent object on um, so that the game over script will still function. 
So let's go ahead and open up our game start UI controller script. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create the array for those game objects. So we're going to put game object here. It's going to be serialized fields. And then we need the square braces. And we can type control game objects. So that's a little bit obscure, that name, but that'll do for now. So this array is going to hold all the game objects we need to control. And then in our start game, um, rather than have the game object turn itself off, we're going to actually run through the array and turn off one by one the objects that we um, need to control. So we can say for each, we're going to go and use a for each loop and we can say game object and then we can just write our variable name here. We say current game object. And then we need to specify the array in which we're actually going to loop through, which is going to be our control game objects. So I'm going to paste that in there and then open up the curly braces and then we can say current game object dot set active to false and then finish it off with a semicolon. And that's literally it we, to extend that script and to get the functionality we need, um, which will also work in both instances. So let me show you. So that script's just going to compile. So you see here now we have our control game object script. The current list is empty, so I'm going to click it twice because I know that I've got my canvas and my target I need to turn off. So go ahead, drag in my canvas, drag in my target. These two game objects are going to get turned off. Whilst the game over, parent object is going to stay on all the time and we're just going to control the children. But because we've tweaked it here, we also will have to do that on our game start UI controller because now um, it's no longer going to turn off the game object. So all of our game start bits and pieces are going to stay on, which is this canvas we see in the screen here. So we're going to go ahead and click on the little button and we could just drag in the game start straight into there because we, we know we're not going to use that. But that's only like a one off and we don't need to turn that one on again. So we can drag game start into there. We could if we wanted to, and it would be perfectly reasonable to make this two like we did before and drag in the canvas and drag in the target. We'll get the same result in the end. So let's jump into VR and give that a test. Let's pop the headset on, controller. So let's grab the gun. I'm gonna to shoot to start. Get our little countdown as before. And off we go, we can shoot our targets. Time is going down. Why well, getting better? And then game over. We get our game over box. So game over, try again, shoot the target. And then three, two, one, then go. Then get to do it all again. And then you see we've got our game over boxes come up again. But as you can see, it's got the remainder of um, the text that we had before. So it's finished on go. So we need to amend the text in that text box before we turn it off. Uh, and we also need to look at um, the trigger button because although I think it's on in the hierarchy. Yes, it is. So it's probably played the animation and it's stayed at that state where I've scaled it down. So it's there, but probably really small and we need to reactivate it. So let's have a look at that. Awesome, so let's just reset our text. Let's go to our game over and click on our game over script. Let's bring this up. So we have this method here called activate game over UI. And this is activating our um, game over canvas and turning on. So it makes sense to extend this script to accommodate for all that new functionality. So we're gonna need to get hold of the text mesh pro object. So we will say using TM Pro, and then we'll create another serialized field, and this is going to be text, ooh, text mesh pro UGUI, and this is our game over text. And then in our activate game over UI, let us make another method called reset UI components. We haven't got this yet, so we're going to put our mouse over it, control full stop and generate the method. And in here, this is where we're just going to reset some stuff. So we can say game over text dot text is going to be equal to game over. 
Oh no, it's not, is it? Try again. We'll just call it try again. And then the player knows that they've got to shoot the target. We might be adding more to this reset UI component, so I won't make this one an expression body. So now let's have a look at the target and making sure that that's in its active state again. Okay, so this button here, which is on our um, game over canvas, um, our target here, the reason when we go around a second time and that target's not there, is because that animation has played out where we scale down and uh, it spins around and then it gets to the point at the end of that animation and it stops uh, and gets reset. But then when it comes around to coming on again, uh, it's still in that state from that animation, so it's going to be tiny and the collider is going to be off as well because we turn off the collider. There's, we can either reset that through scripts um, to turn the collider back on and to adjust the scale and to reset the animator. Or we can create an idle animation for this button, um, which will then kick in next time the button comes on. So if we have a look at the animator controller for this, which is our game start controller, which is just here. We have an idle, which is just nothing. This is like an empty state. It's just kind of sitting there. And then the second um, we shoot, we get the start target animation play out just below. And you can see that uh, in action. If I go to my target and click on the game start target script, you can see here where I've got the play animation. And I've got animator.play start target anim. So it's going to play that animation. So when we come around again, we need to be in this idle state. So this needs to have an animation associated with it. And this is probably the easiest solution at this moment in time. So what we'll do is create an animation. So let's just drag that out of the way a second. Bring up our animator window, go to animation and then animation. And we should have this box and we'll click on our target. You can see here we've got a start target animation already on this object. We're going to create a new animation. We're going to create a new clip. And let's go to the animation folder. And we'll call this start target idle. Like so. Uh, and then we just need to add a couple of properties to this. So we need to make sure the scale is currently where it is. So we can go to add property. Go to transform scale and we click on the plus to add in the keyframes and this is just going to add in those keyframes um, for the scale i'm going to keep those we'll just loop this animation through the for the entire time the button is idle and then we also want to make sure the box collider is on so we're going to go ahead and add property box collider enabled and then plus so all the while whilst we're in this idle state the box collider is going to be active and we could turn this on through scripts but whilst we're doing this all in animation let's just let's just do it this way for a second it gives you some more um, options moving forward about how you can control a few things you can do this through scripts or you can do it through the animator so now we've got those two and they are in our animation window we're all done here we can click on close we go back to our animator controller for this object. And you can see here we've got our start, tar start target idle. We can either re remove the idle, this is already hooked up, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to delete the start target idle, click on idle so we can see it in the inspector here. And then that animation we just created, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag in the start target idle into the motion slot. So this idle has that animation associated to it. I'm going to make sure that in the, um, the loop time is checked. Uh, although it doesn't really need to be, as long as it that keyframe at the start contains the box glider to be on and also the scale, that should be okay. But for a minute, I'm just going to leave it as a loop. Um, so let's go ahead and check out to see if our button is now working. Okay. Hit play and see if this button is resetting and our text is all reset. Go ahead and let's grab the gun and shoot our start target. Yeah, that's all still working. Nothing's changed there. And then we get our targets and our timer. Oh, look at this. Right, and then we get our game over canvas. Try a game. So it's resetting the text. We've got our 
box up here for the first time, but that's good. That happened last time. It's when I shoot it and we go again. So let's see if it comes back on this next run through. We'll shoot the targets, we'll fix that. So the time is going down. We're in our next part of the game. Trying to beat our score if we had one. Hey, so we got our target back and it says try again. So we shoot it. it goes away, try again. Got one more run through just to make sure it's resetting all okay. Time is still good. Back there, and we go ahead and shoot it again. Oh, bullseye. So that's great, that's all working properly. So there we go. What a video that was. That was about must be about half an hour by now. Um, but in this one, we've actually managed to get the entirety of our main game sequence from start to finish. So the player can shoot a start button, takes them through a pro process where you have the timer, they're able to shoot the targets, uh, and then it resets, gives you a game over message, and you can try again and again and again, and just keep trying to beat your score. It's a little cool contained game. But hopefully in this one, you've seen how you can put something together quite quickly and quite simply. And it, it's going to give us a good foundation in which now we can go ahead and build the, the bit of the game in between the start and the finish. So we can improve our targets and our scoring, get some things going on when we shoot the targets uh, and start really building the game and making quite a cool little experience. So in next week's video, we're going to take a look at that little bit of the game in between the start and the finish. Um, have a look at wiring up some of the animations when you shoot these targets and start populating the area with some content in here just to make it a little bit more engaging and also we're going to have a look at tidying up our hit points as well so when you shoot a target where you've hit it you get a, a visible red cross just need to tidy up that system and have some control over tangling them off when the game is finished but i'm not quite sure how to do that yet at the moment um, we're just instantiating uh, a prefab but I think it might be better to start having a look at some object pooling just for some efficiency. So we pull um, the red cross from the object pool and that gets used to instantiate the cross. Um, but you guys let me know if that is object pooling something you're interested in having a look, then drop a comment in the comment section below and I, we can have a look at that functionality in the game. That's it for this week. Sorry, it's quite a long one. Got a lot covered though, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've learned something or you found something useful and enjoyed the video then it really helped me out leave a like on the video thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video